everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. Okay, as you can see behind me is a 2009 Crown Vic Police Interceptor that I just picked up at auction, at the Federal Canadian Government auction. And today I'd like to go over a few uh, things that I look for when I'm picking up a uh, Crown Vic at auction and things that you might want to look for if you're going to buy a Crown Vic in the future and I highly recommend that you do because they're great cars. All right, so this 2009 Crown Vic Police Interceptor P71 is as I picked it up from the auction. I have done nothing to it. Um, I'm gonna clean it up, make it look a lot better, but this is what it looks like when you pick them up. The first thing I'm gonna look at is the front bumper, and you can see right here that it's got rust marks on the plastic. Now, a lot of this will come off with a little bit of work, but this is, uh, from having a push bar on the front of these cars. So in Canada, they take the push bars off before they sell them to the public. So in most cases, you cannot get a police interceptor with the push bar or with spotlight still installed. They take those off, so you gotta get those separately if you want them. I know in the US that they often sell them still with the push bars, but not up here in Canada. Okay, and then another common problem with Crown Vicks is having water and condensation inside the headlights. This is a common problem. You usually have one, like in this case, this one's okay. Uh, the headlights are actually available on eBay. I'll put a link below where you can get them. They are not expensive, not expensive at all. I think you can get two headlights for $150 now. So this is not a deal breaker. These are not expensive. So if you do have this condensation problem, don't worry, you can get another headlight relatively cheap. Here's another tip. In the side marker lights, in the, si the signal lights on the side, there's a hole at the bottom here on, on both sides, and this is where they have the strobe lights, uh, the police car strobe lights. They leave the hole, which uh, is not very good because water can get inside eventually. So it's a good idea once you get your Crown Vic is to get in there and seal that up with tape or something else so that water doesn't get inside here and wreck these uh, side turn signals. Now this particular bumper also has a mark from where the push bar was. And this could have meant that uh, this car saw a little bit of action where the push bar was used and it imprinted itself in the bumper. Uh, or it could have been during the installation that it sort of compressed the bumper. The rest of the bumper looks okay, so I'm not really quite sure about that. But So it's got a mark on the bumper. The Crown Vicks up here in the Great White North often come with snow tires. This one has snow tires because uh, we deal with snowy conditions and they just leave the snow tires on all year as far as I can tell. And uh, usually when you pick up these cars, the tread is in good shape. They usually take very good care and you get good tires whenever you pick up an auction um, Crown Vic. And as I walk around, I can see that there's a scrape here. It's not too serious, but uh, obviously they scraped against something it doesn't affect the operation of the doors so that's fine and we'll carry her on and the back bumper they're often torn this one's got a little dent right here uh, which with a little bit of heat that might come out they take the decals off but they do a bad job quite a bad job so if you want your car to look really good it's gonna have to do a lot of manual labor to try and get these decals off and it is a lot of work a lot of work but they will come off and of course there's always holes drilled in and then they just use duct tape to cover over them it's very unattractive you can uh, take the duct tape off with a heat gun and you can put in a plastic plug that'll look a lot better you can get them in white or black you normally have one antenna hole on the bottom another antenna hole right there towards the back of the roof. This is where the antenna puck would have gone and the GPS puck and it's also got a hole. And then of course, this hole in the middle of the roof is for the wires for the light bar that would have gone crossed. Sometimes you have dents in the roof from the light bar. This one's not too bad. A few marks right there. So basically, when you're at the auction, take a walk around, look for any dents, looking for rust. The cars often have rust right here, 
because this is metal and rocks and everything else can chip the paint and then rust can start right here. This one's in good shape. And for some reason, they often rust right here. This one has a little strip of rice, rust, sorry. It's just surface rust, it's not a big deal. It can be sanded and repainted. Uh, so a little bit of rust there. Now you don't get rust here because it's plastic, but the paint gets worn off by the tires here. But that's not a big deal. And of course, remember, the cars up here, at least up here in Canada, use E85 as well as gasoline. So either way, you can use it. These are flex fuel cars. Sometimes the Crown Vicks are missing their mirror covers right here. These covers come right off because they normally have strobe lights here. And when they decommission the cars, they take off the strobe lights and put these covers back on. But if they can't find the covers, they leave them off. So sometimes you're gonna have to source these covers in a wrecking yard. Now, another very important thing to do when you're looking at the car at auction is to look underneath the front of the car and look at all the radiators in the front. You can see right here we have air conditioning radiator, the regular radiator, plus an oil, uh, oil cooler, which is right up there. I don't know if you can see. Now, sometimes the fittings on the oil cooler, uh, they leak, and then you can see the leak right here. Uh, this looks all very dry. I don't see any signs of oil leakage here at all, so that's not bad. It's also a good idea to check for the rebar in the front of the bumper right here, the brace in front of the radiator. It's, uh, you want to make sure it's not dented. This one looks nice and straight. No major collisions here. And as you can see, the front suspension looks very clean. No leaks from the shocks and yeah, not too bad at all. And here you can see the tread, winter tires, good tread. And I always check for even wear on the tire that will expose any suspension problems if there is uneven wear. These are worn nice and evenly across. Look under the undercarriage of the car. There's a little bit of surface rust, nothing serious. This car is in great shape, actually. I've seen plenty of their far rustier than this. Now take a look at that drive shaft. That's that silver tube right in the center. The Crown Vicks have a special aluminum drive shaft, not available on any other regular civilian Crown Vic. That's something you really want to see. That helps the vehicle go uh, at high speeds. And uh, it's one of the unique features of the police interceptor. These vehicles are actually raised, I think about an inch or an inch and a half over the the ride height of a stock Crown Vic to give them a little better clearance so that they can actually go over curbs without completely wrecking the car. So actually, yeah, your Crown Vic is made to go over curbs without suffering a fatal damage. A quick look at the back of the vehicle. And again, very minimal rust. Uh, everything looks really good here. One more thing to look for is any cracks in the windshield. Uh, they often have a few little small chips and uh, usually the report, there is a report that they give you on the car, will tell you whether or not it's cracked, but you better check it yourself because this will cost you some extra money if you have to replace this windshield. This particular windshield is just fine. Okay, after the exterior, head towards the interior. And I look right here because this panel, the switch panel, is sometimes uh, cracked or broken. I've seen a few with uh, screws right here to hold it in. This one looks very good. And the interior looks pretty clean. And the, the federal government, uh, Canadian uh, GSC surplus, they do a pretty good job of cleaning these vehicles before they go out. Let's take a look at the engine. All right, there we go. And we have a very clean engine bay. I mean, for a car that's used this much, this is pretty clean. And uh, this one's clean, I've seen cleaner. Uh, what you wanna do here is check the radiator fluid. Make sure the car's not on, make sure it's cold. Open this. And you wanna check the fluid to make sure it's actually clear. And you also wanna make sure that there's no uh, sliminess around the cap here because that could mean that perhaps oil is getting into the radiator fluid through a crack so we don't want that so we want clear fluid 
and let's check the power steering fluid and don't know if you can see there but it's red it should be red check the belt engine not running check the belt because now they're usually good on the maintenance so this is pretty rare but I've seen a few with cracks and a very worn out belt so look for cracks look for anywhere in the belt this one looks in good shape also you got to watch yourself because I have found that the hood dampeners uh, the hood uh, struts they often are kind of worn out so just suddenly the hood might actually close on you so I don't want you to get hurt so just watch out for that I've had a few that nearly tried to take my head off but there you go uh, everything looks pretty good in here pretty clean the other thing to consider when you're just looking at the engine is these are plastic manifolds intake manifolds uh, they look really nice this is in pretty good shape but they can crack with heat and age they can crack and if they crack sometimes coolant can start to leak out of them and sometimes you'll see a crack right here or right here so look for any coolant leaks or any cracks on the intake manifold sometimes you can see fluid inside the the valley here right here this one it seems to be fine now we should check the oil <laughs> Before we start the engine, look to make sure that it's fairly clean. This is fairly clean and uh, it's up to the mark. Now while we're in this area, take a look at the steering shaft right here. That's that bar right here. As you can see, it's exposed to the elements and some of these start to rust out. And when they rust out, you can sort of feel it in the steering wheel. This one's not in too bad a shape. I've seen ones that are much worse. So you want to look for that. That one looks okay. Down here we can check the various hoses going to your rack and pinion. And we can see here also hoses that are going uh, to your oil cooler. There are no leaks. This is sometimes where you can see a leak. This looks all in great shape as well. Now of course at the auction you can't really check the brakes. You can't even take these cars for a test drive. But I have found that the brakes are always in good shape. They change the pads on a regular basis, so you shouldn't have any problem. And most of the time, the disc is really smooth. So I think it's either the pads or the maintenance, but I've had very few problems with any brakes. The brakes seem to work really good on these cars. One more thing about the exterior. This car doesn't have any particular problems, but the paint on the Crown Vicks on the police interceptors is terrible. Everybody knows it. It's terrible. It peels off easy. Um, you try and take the decals off and sometimes the paint will come with the decal. Uh, a lot of these cars have just bare patches where you can see the primer. So some of them are really bad shape. Now of course you can spot paint it but it really affects the look of the car. This one is in really good shape. It doesn't have any of those spots but that's something to look out for too. It depends if you care about the appearance of the car, how much you care about it but some of them are really bad shape. This one's in good shape. Now, let's move to the interior. And actually, no, I'm gonna start the car now. So I've looked at the engine with it cold. I'm gonna start the car. Yes, leave the car, leave the car. Okay, I'm about to start the car. And this is a very important part because um, you're not allowed to drive the car. So all you can do is start the car. And even that, they sometimes deny you that in, the, in Canada. But anyway, you want to start the car. And what you're listening for, hopefully the car is cold. And you're listening for any unusual noises on startup. These noises will sometimes go away, but they're very telltale noises. And let's see if this one has any unusual noises. Okay, so I've started the car, and you can see this one has 195,480 kilometers. Kilometers because we're up here in Canada, but I can switch that to miles just by pressing down the little button. And we have 121,000 miles on this vehicle. Um, there are no engine lights, that's good, you don't want that. And there was no unusual noises, like 
sort of clunky noises or thumping noises at all, but there is a airbag light. That's annoying. Now you saw that airbag light, it's on now constantly. And when you first start up the car, it flashes. And it does one flash with a pause and then eight more flashes. That means it's a code and the code for the airbag light malfunction is 18. One long fla one flash, pause, and then eight flashes. That makes 18. Now, if you know your codes, you know that that is possibly a lamp malfunction, a lamp malfunction. And what that means is that there's a lamp right over here that lights up to tell whether or not the passenger side airbag is on or off, depending on, if some, uh, depending on if someone is sitting in the seat or not. This light, there's a light behind here that sometimes burns out and then that causes the airbag malfunction light to light up. And so you can't really do it at the auction, but once you get home with the car like I am now, you can check to see if that's true. And I'm gonna do that right now. This light, I believe, is burnt out, but let's find out. It's so simple. All you do is grab here, right over here, and pull. <laughs> just like that, it comes right off. The whole thing will just come right off, easy. And this is our trunk release right in the center. And this is our little light. Our little light. Let's take this apart, if I can. Okay, I've taken it apart. And there is your little tiny light bulb. Little tiny light bulb. Now, I don't think you can see in the camera, but I can see, I've got my glasses on, I can see that that bulb is broken. That's right. One of the little tiny, tiny, tiny wires inside the bulb is broken. So that is why that airbag light is on, code 18. So all you gotta do is replace this bulb and that airbag light will be gone and you'll be golden. Now you can actually buy these light bulbs on eBay and if I can find it, I'll put the link below that are a direct replacement for this bulb. And I think it's about $19, $15, I don't know. But you know what you can do? You can take a regular LED bulb, like a very small one, and you can actually solder it onto these contacts. It will light up and it will also get rid of that light. So if you're really cheap and you just wanna get a little tiny LED bulb, um, don't know if I can show you one, but anyway, a small little tiny bulb of any sort, if you solder it in here, that will take care of the problem as well. And it's relatively cheap. So there's a simple fix for that airbag light. Okay, the engine's running. And you wanna to listen to the engine. Now this is how a Crown Vic engine should basically sound. It should be smooth. It shouldn't be vibrating. And you should be hearing a ticking noise, but that's okay. That's the fuel injectors. That's the fuel injectors making that ticking noise. It's coming from right up here. What you don't want is any sound from down there where the crankshaft is. Because you might have a spun bearing or something like that if you had a thunking noise down there. But there's nothing on this one, this one sounds good. Make sure she revs good. And she does. Okay, one more thing to check while you're at the instrument panel is to cycle through from miles. There's your trip odometer. Oh, look at this, 4,624 idle hours. That means the number of hours that this car has just sat idling. And that does cause wear, and so it's important to know the idle hours because that's additional wear on the engine. And of course, they use that to calculate how often they should change the oil and other maintenance aspects. The lower the idle hours, the better. Uh, unfortunately, this is quite a common amount of idle hours up here in Canada. I've seen as high as 8,000. 5,000 is quite common. If you can get it under 2,000, you're doing pretty good. This is 4,624, that's right where you kind of happens. And um, yeah, so that's how you see the idle hours. 
And up here you have, this is where your ticket light would have been. They don't normally let the cars go with the ticket light, which is too bad. So then you get this ridiculous spot, but you can always buy something that will cover this. Another light if you can find it. And also, you should make sure that everything's working properly when you're at the auction. Make sure the air conditioning is working. Make sure the blower is working. Make sure that the the um, make sure that with the selector here you can get the air to go on the floor, in the middle, and on the frost because sometimes uh, there's a vacuum leak and so it will not switch from the floor to the to the defrost. So you want to make sure that that's working. You want to make sure the air conditioning is working. These cars have adjustable pedals. Not all Crown Vicks, not all police interceptors have this. This is kind of cool. As you can see, the pedals go forward and back. That's so that anybody of any size can fit into these cars. Another thing to check when you have the car running is to check to make sure all the window switches are working. And that is because often there's defective window switches. I haven't run into that too often, but it can happen. And so you want to make sure that all the windows are working. One more thing to worry about is that often the steering wheels are all worn out. This one's not in bad shape at all, really. But sometimes the foam is actually chunked out. It's quite common to have marks. And this one's in really good shape, but sometimes they're really terrible. So you got to consider that. The other thing too is the seat. This seat looks in good shape. Sometimes the springs are broken because you might have had a a giant police officer in here and he might be breaking the seat and uh, this one's pretty good and if the seat is broken if the springs are broken here it'll have a sort of a lumpy depressed look and it will not be comfortable at all uh, the seats always tear a little bit right on this metal brace they always are torn but sometimes they're torn up here as well this one's in good shape but there's quite a few that are torn up here so this one is about normal they're always torn a little bit right there uh, also, these seats have lumbar adjustment and the seat position is completely adjustable from the door, which is very convenient. And they put it on the door because there's no room on the side here because the police officers often have belts with lots of equipment on and it's really hard to get to the controls down here. So they put all the controls conveniently right there. Uh, another thing too is that there's no carpet, of course, there's just rubber vinyl covering, but that's great because it's easy to clean and easy to make it look really nice. You can get actually a vinyl spray, a black vinyl spray, and this one's not in bad shape, but you can spray this with a vinyl spray and it'll look fantastic. Okay, now we're in the back seat, and man, this back seat is looking, oh, I got to cut there, but normally they're in really great shape. Whenever I go into these back seats, they're in great shape. And for a long time, I figured, how can they be such in great shape? Because, you know, these cars have been used. Prisoners have been back here. How can they be in such great? Well, that's because they haven't been used. Normally, what they do is when the car goes into service, they put a plastic prisoner seat in here, a plastic prisoner seat. And then when they decommission the car, they take that out to reuse it and they put back in the totally unused seat and uh, occasionally they cannot find a unused seat and they sell the cars with the plastic prisoner seats occasionally but normally they come with this beautiful rear vinyl seat that's in almost perfect shape now the one thing I notice is that they don't put them in very well as you can see and so all you got to do is sort of push it in and it'll hook into its position. You gotta make sure that you got your seat belts through. It's not a big job and your seat will be ready to go. Uh, one more thing. I know I'm rambling all over the place here, but I'm just doing this as I think about it. Um, you, they always come missing this uh, little tray that's supposed to fit in here. You can get those on eBay if you wanna take care of that, but there is a 12 volt outlet right here that comes with the car. There's another 12 volt outlet that goes on this tray, but uh, so there's two right there. Okay, all the windows are working. Now, when you're in the rear seat, not only will the, the doors are not working, also the windows don't work. As you can see, the windows don't work. Windows don't work. This part is because the uh, 
RCMP, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, they take the rods out of the doors. So you've got to get the rods at a wrecker to make these handles work again. That can be done. But what about the windows? That's not working, how come? Well, I'm gonna show you a little simple little trick right here. Let's see if I can show you. You gotta take out this center plastic piece. Let's see if I can do it. Okay, I have managed to get this center piece. This is your B pillar. This is your B pillar right beside the front seat here. I managed to get this loose. I sort of had to take up the sill panel, remove a little bit of rubber, and I got it loose. And look at this. There's a connector. Oh look, there's another connector. And they're supposed to go together. Okay, let's just see if this will fit in here. Will that fit in here? Oh, there you go. Come on, get in there. And click. All right. The windows work now. See that? That's right, all you gotta do is connect up that one switch and your rear windows will now work. And of course the trunk is pretty straightforward. It's a huge trunk, you can fit everything in here. Um, this one does come with a spare and the jack, but often they don't. So it's very rare that they actually come with everything you need, but this one does have it, it's perfect. Sometimes you're missing the trim here. This one's got the trim, everything looks good. This is a pretty good Crown Vic. All right, there you have it. That is Crown Vic Tips and Tricks Part 2. And just a few things for you to look out for when you're buying a Crown Vic Police Interceptor at auction. And I suggest you do while you can. So thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.